All right. So I kind of stumbled upon in the last video the beginning of what's called a gradient overlay. And instead of it being just light and dark like my cast shadow, I used a rainbow. But I'm going to turn that off for now um, so I can show you kind of the power of such things in a little bit. But we were working on our cast shadow. So we made a duplicate of our creature. Here, let me put it onto normal mode. We filled it with a gradient black to white. And then we stretched it using perspective and distort away from our creature. And now the way cast shadows work is they soften as they pull away. So one way you can do that is actually with the blur tool, which is right above the dodge and burn tool. I'm going to make it big. I'm going to keep it at 50% because I want it to blur pretty quickly. And it will soften edges as I hit them. But even at 50%, it works pretty slowly. And another great tool is right with the blur and sharpen tool. It's called the smudge tool. And with the smudge tool, here I'll just use a regular brush. That's pressure sensitive. I want it soft. I want it large. Strength, let's do, let's do less than, like dodge and burn, less than 20. With the smudge tool, you can actually pull the shadow out in certain directions, which means you can make it kind of wrap around the environment a little bit. Like I can pull the shadow underneath this waffle. And as I pull it, you can see that it softens. This is really good for softer textures, for um, reflections in water, things like that. can push and pull it so that more of that waffle comes through. Now the problem is shadows aren't solid. Shadows are a low opacity, you know, on top of what's underneath them. So how can I mimic that? Well, I can use layer styles, these blending modes, and kind of go through them and see, okay, does linear burn work? Does soft light work? Soft light is usually a pretty safe one. And then if you want more of that, you just duplicate it. And you can see what that does. The problem is my gradient is brighter here than it should be. So I can always fix that just with dodging and burning right on the shadow. Right? So if I put it to normal again, instead of this being light, Let's burn that down in the midtones. And that can give you some of that natural variation too. So you don't need to just stick with the gradient. The gradient is just a good place to start. And then I might dodge it here. I actually don't really want it there. I can even just erase it. Well, maybe I want a little bit of it. Okay. So now let's go to soft light. And you see, now I have a cast shadow. And if I want it stronger, what do I do? I duplicate it, Command-J. And then what's great about a duplicate is I can always just play with its opacity, find the level I want. And that all looks good, except for right here, where things don't quite line up. So what do I do for that? I use my Move tool, I use my Ruler, and I'm going to crop that out. So I think for my creature, to showcase it, I want a composition that starts here, goes down to here. Maybe you want your creature to be at least 25% of your composition. And then I can use the crop tool, crop that all. And that, of course, changes my image size and my potential for how, to, how it might be used. All right, now I've missed, messed with the lighting direction on the creature itself with my overlay layer. 
What if I take a duplicate of my creature, Command-J, just like with the overlay layer, what if I just fill it not with just middle gray, but double click and fill it with a gradient that matches the lighting direction, just like I did the, the drop shadow. You can see my overlay layer underneath it. So let's, uh, I'll cancel and I'll move it on top. Okay, so I'm gonna say double click. This is all kind of advanced uh, messing with the pixels, compositing stuff. Gradient overlay. I'm using the basic black to white but I don't want black to white to go this way. Instead, I want it to go this way. And I can play with the scale of it. How extreme is it? Notice it's not affecting the arm because that's on a different layer. And then I can just play with the opacity, but that's going to look kind of weird because that's going to gray out everything. So instead, just like I did with the non-destructive layer, I need to right click and rasterize the layer style and then I can play with blending modes. And just like I did with the cast shadow, if I use soft light and then play with the opacity of that, this is what's called a gradient overlay. And it can do a lot to kind of match your lighting. And you can dodge and burn directly on top of that. So instead of just doing a middle gray non-destructive layer, you can do a gradient overlay non-destructive layer. And sometimes that's even more helpful. And that's starting to match better and better with the environment. So what I had found that I liked and then turned off was to play with a gradient that was in my candy land one of these more extreme ones. You, know, you can always create your own gradients. This is a rainbow gradient. And you can change the color at any time if I don't want that to be so saturated in magenta. I can push it more towards the oranges. Maybe push this a little bit less magenta. Not a big fan of purple. There we go. Towards pinks. And I can try linear, right? I can try these different, different options. And this is just to get some of this reflected color from around it, bouncing off of it. Ooh. I think I like the reflected best. And then I can set this gradient's blend mode to be soft light. So I don't actually need to rasterize the layer style. I can actually set the layer style's blending mode if I know what I'm going for to be something like soft light or overlay. And then I can actually move that up above other layers if I want. But it's a most effective here. Is it most effective on top of my gradient shadow or underneath. I think it's most effective underneath it. And if it's a little too strong, which I think it is, I can always take its opacity down. So it's just a little bit of reflected color in there that helps match the environment. So many things we can try. Now, if I move my smart layer of my creature up on top of all of this, you can see how much I've changed it from when I've brought it in. through posing it, through playing with lighting, dodging and burning, and that's just all on the creature. And that's all without even playing with adjustments like, like uh, color balance, like levels. So these things are great. So now, can we do that to the environment itself? Like if I have a cast shadow on my creature, shouldn't I have a cast shadow under its hand on the raspberry? Right. So now I'm going to go basically on top of everything. And I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to say edit fill 
with middle gray. 50% gray, normal 100%. And this is to now dodge and burn the landscape. So I'm going to set that whole thing to be a non-destructive overlay layer. So without dodging and burning, it doesn't do a thing. Because this is exactly 50%. But if I want to put a shadow underneath that raspberry, I can then use my burn tool, mid-tones, less than 20%. And I can burn that. Right. And I can burn the waffle now around my creature. So its shadow is actually hitting the waffle now, not just the ground. I can hit the ground a little bit differently. I think I overdid it there, but it's okay. I can always just erase. See what helps and what doesn't. Or just burn more. And then that shows me that that shadow, just understanding all of your different layers, can be softened more. I'm going to merge those two together, put it onto soft light. And now I'm going to use that smudge tool soften this edge more just pushing it back and forth until it softens like that that shadow underneath my creature okay now on this non-destructive overlay layer this is all i've done so far if i turn it to normal mode i've just put some shadows in but i can dodge and burn on this so if i think that the waffles are a little bright here i can burn them in the midtones. If I want the the background behind him to be a little bit darker, like these mountains, it's good to save. These are lots and lots of steps that we're using. Oh, I'm on the smudge tool. I'm wasting my time smudging middle gray into middle gray. So that's doing nothing. So I want to be on that burn tool. Unfortunately, smudge takes a lot of processing, so it's catching up with me here. But once it catches up, come on. Now I can burn behind my creature, just the midtones, so that those directional lights I've been working on show up a little bit better. This is basically a way to just safely dodge and burn without adding saturation and without accidentally burning highlights or burning shadows. You know, you can't get to solid black by doing this. Okay, and then ultimately, what's also going to help <coughs> is adjusting the overall color balance, right? So I'm, I can't do that with an overlay layer, but you can see how that helps. I might as well also dodge some of it, add some brightness to the midtones. Like the sky should maybe be a little bit brighter if I have all this light coming from this side. just in the sky I'm kind of I'm using that soft edge so it looks cloudy and softer gives me a little bit of a uh, an atmosphere especially around the cotton candy so if I put it to normal mode you'll see this is the kind of dodging I'm doing on top of it and I can make that bigger and gradate it especially in the background even less set it to overlay mode and if I don't like it, I can always use my eraser. Where it got to be too much. And I can always sink it down into the background, this non-destructive overlay layer. Where I've been adjusting things. <clears throat> 